All right, welcome back to the training. Today we are going to cover thing number three when it comes to the prerequisites of monetizing your podcast. So by now you have the unique topic that you want to go with or you understand how to approach that. You probably or ideally have a better idea of how to con how to package your content. So we covered the content itself, the thumbnail, the title, and the timing of your content. And then today we're going to top it all off with the podcast format and the podcast delivery. Those are two separate thing, things that I think really separate people who are great from people who are just okay. There's a big, big gap there. And I think these two things are the biggest things that determine how well a video does, how well an episode will do for your business. All right. So in thinking through this idea of like how to explain podcast format, you know, as easy, as simple as possible. Um, I thought back to my early adolescence when I was working for my parents. So most people don't know this, but quick story on background on me. I originally was a restaurant major in college. And the reason for that was because my parents, since I was in the fourth grade, they owned an Italian bakery in South Florida. And I worked at that bakery for my entire, you know, um, middle school, high school, college education even now I'll come back and I'll throw and I'll help out a little bit when I can. So when I thought about an episode and how to package an episode or what podcast episode format is about, I thought of a sandwich, right? I mean, I made thousands of sandwiches in my lifetime working at a bakery. Um, trust me. And this is probably the easiest way to explain it. So think of, um, think of, your format as the bread of a sandwich. If you change the bread, you will change the flavor of the sandwich completely, even if all the ingredients, all the other ingredients stay the same, okay? So format is kind of equivalent to the bread of a sandwich. As you can see here, we've got like a, on the left-hand side, we've got like a white, like puffy, you know, Italian, you know, white bread. We've got our kind of grilled panini press, wheat bread, that's probably warm and crispy and crunchy. And then you've got a wrap, right? Something cold. Um, something you probably get in the summer that has, you know, it's kind of like a white flour, you know, uh, tortilla kind of thing, all very different way, the way they taste. Right. Um, but essentially there's still, all of them are still a Turkey sandwich at its core. So think of, think through it like that. I like to, again, the easiest way to put it, your format is going to be like the bread of a sandwich. If you change that, it's going to change how people, um, you know, receive or, or, you know, enjoy the, uh, content. So. To give you a kind of go deeper with this example, these are all styles of interviews. So if we have, we've got Truth or Dare here with James Corden. He's interviewing somebody technically, but he's asking them questions and doing it more Truth or Dare style. You've got uh, the car interview with George Kemmel and uh, and Adam uh, Alex Ramosi. And I've never seen Alex Ramosi do a car interview, so this is kind of interesting to watch, right? But it's a completely look and feel from the Truth or Dare, or even this one here, which is a virtual interview, right? Which a lot of people do. So these are all interviews. All we've done is change the bread of the interview, right? We've changed the bread, changed the format of the interview, and now it's completely different. The questions you ask, um, the context or the, the surroundings of which you're in, the uh, experience the audience has with it, and also, more importantly, how long they engage with it. And that will obviously determine how much YouTube or these other algorithms show your content. So this is why this is important. Because if everyone in your in your marketplace is doing virtual interviews, is there a way that you can do a car interview? Can you do truth or dare? Can you do something else that you see out there in another space, maybe on radio shows or talk shows? That is what can increase your listen time. That is what's gonna help you get more views and subscribers, et cetera. So, so just an example of format here, a couple other ones to give you. Um, we've got, you know, we've got, a, a, I'd separate this as like, You've got on the left here, outbound, finding people to interview. You're going on the street and interviewing people. Um, this is uh, John Yushai, who's really famous, a really famous YouTuber. He's actually actually work at um, Instagram and YouTube. And he's gotten hundreds of millions of views. And this is one of the, like, the styles or formats that took off for him, was going on the street, asking people, hey, who do you know? Do you know Cristiano Ronaldo or do you know this other guy? I don't even know his name. Um, but like, who do you know? The mainstream mainstream um famous people or like the new new age like youtube influencer famous people like and he actually did a poll and found out on random people like on average how many people know you know george clooney versus mr beast 
That's one outbound example of interviews with strangers. Another way you could do it is do it like Dave Ramsey. He's been doing this and have been super successful for many, many years is having a call in show. People call in, they ask him their question about money and he answers it. Very, very popular format, very successful format, right? He's actually doing it now with a, um, another person, a co-host who he's bringing in to help him field the questions as part of his Ramsey network. And this is how he kind of brings in people who are on his team that he wants to raise up. And that's how he's kind of like giving them authority by putting them on this show and having them help with the questions. And then she, I think she has her own show as well. Um, a couple other people he's done this with on his channel, you can check it out. But these are all, these are calling, these are shows where you're asking strangers questions or vice versa, strangers asking you questions. Similar, we've just changed the bread of this style of this type of um, interview. Another one here is, um, you know, kind of a solo content. So you can have, you can do solos where you're just reacting to somebody else's content and giving your feedback on it. Or you can do like I do, which is a solo monologue, which is probably what a lot of people do right now. Um, one thing I try to do to make sure it's different and unique is just add a focus, a lot of time and attention on the hook, focus a lot more time and attention on the cuts and the things we're doing in the beginning of the video to hook people in. But I'd still say this is a pretty basic, um, this is a pretty basic type of um, content, right? It's solo monologue format. So another option you could do is a reaction based format, which it's still you, you know, still you face the camera alone, but now you're looking at a video and commenting on it as well, which is pretty cool. So these are all examples of how once we change the bread of an interview show or a solo show or a call in show, it completely changes the experience a listener has with it, which is important. All right, so a few format tips here to wrap up. Uh, I recommend testing three formats for most experts. If you're an agency cons consultant, you have a mastermind, you're trying to get high ticket clients um, or membership clients, test three multiple ones. Typically, it's going to be some form of interview. Get creative with how you do that. Um, a solo version and then a Q&A or kind of call in version are probably the good formats to test. And like we saw here, there's plenty of ways that you can be different and, and show and, you know, just separate yourself from the competition. All right, do variations of what's working. So can you do better editing? Can you ask different questions? Can you um, have different animations on the screen? How can we put the you and the viewer in a different setting? Maybe you're outside, maybe you're at your patio, maybe you're in a studio. What is the thing that everyone else is doing in your space and then what can you do differently? All right, and then last, um, what I like to do is study game shows, late night shows. You saw James Corden on there, he's a great example. Um, radio shows. These uh, media companies have different formats for a reason. They also test a lot of different segments and they do things differently because they have to get listeners or else they're going to go into business. So uh, they are masters at this. Um, yes, they have bigger budgets, but you can still model their model their ideas in different ways. All right. So we talked about format. Let's put that away for a second. Let's talk about delivery and let's go back to our turkey and cheese uh, sandwich example. So yes, you can change the bread of a sandwich and it'll taste very different. You can also alternatively change just the ingredients on the inside. Um, you can even change the order of how you put those ingredients on the inside and it will taste differently. Trust me, I've made thousands of sandwiches. I know this for example. Um, <laughs> we've even had, I've even had in the past customers come back. They said, hey, you put the bread, you put the mayonnaise and the oil and vinegar on the bread and I wanted it on the lettuce and tomato. And I learned at a young age, like you cannot put certain ingredients on bread and that you cannot put certain ingredients together even when you're like kind of sequencing the sandwich or else it's going to taste very different made thousands of sandwiches trust me um this is a thing if you're not if you don't believe me um but all that to say there's other things in the side of the episode that we can manipulate even if we have the same format okay so give you an example let's start with just changing what's actually in the sandwich i.e our episode it can, you can have a turkey and cheese, lettuce, tomato, onions, mayo sandwich. It's going to taste very differently, very different from a turkey, cheese, strawberry, and strawberry jam sandwich versus a turkey, cheese, lettuce, oregano, oil, and vinegar sandwich. All They're all three turkey and cheese sandwiches, but even if you just change the last part, it's going to taste very, very differently. Just like with your episodes, if you change the ingredients that you're putting in them, it's going to taste are gonna be experienced very differently, right? So in this case, your ingredients are gonna be things like the hook, the call to action, the listener um, Q and A section, if you have one, 
the interview, the outro, the intro, these are the ingredients that you use to manipulate how people interact with your content, right? So let's look at all the ways we can make an episode different just by changing the around the ingredients, okay? So these are all actual formats that I've seen on other podcasts. Maybe we, we don't always manage these podcasts. We manage about 40 or 50, 40, 45 actually podcasts right now. But um, these are just like from our clients as well as from other other people we've seen in the space, right? So you've got hook, call to action, interview, rapid fire questions, call to action again. You've got pre-recorded interview, uh, pre-recorded intro, excuse me, interview, call to action, recap, outro, hook, pre-recorded intro, call to action, the actual interview, CTA again. Um, and the list goes on and on, right? So let me go back really quick. So these are all technically interview shows. They're all interview shows, if you see there. But how they've changed the ingredients completely affects how your retention will be for episodes and how people will actually Will people come back to your content at all, right? So um, you may be asking at this point, like what is the most optimal way to deliver your content? Like what are the ingredients we should be putting into our episodes? The answer is there's no perfect formula, all right? But we are gonna dive into a, pri a tried, and, tried and true formula that we use, that you can use as well, and some other examples of how to make it good. All right, so to dive in, the one that I typically use and recommend to most clients is going to be this one. It's a hook, main content going right into it. So that could be the solo part, the solo monologue or the reaction video you use, or it could be an interview or it could be a Q and A, but we're always going to start with a hook. We're going to move to a call to act to the, sorry, to the um, main content. And then we'll have a call to action and an outro. Outro is more of a boilerplate. You may not even need it, right? If you're really good at giving calls to actions and you're really comfortable live on camera, then you're probably fine to just give a, a you know a more organic call to action every single time and you don't even need this pre-recorded bit okay a couple notes so number one i recommend if you are trying to sell something if you have a high ticket offer a high ticket coaching program if you have a membership and it is very much aligned to the content that you put out which for most of you who guys you guys are business owners so you're probably putting out a podcast about your business if that's you, then you could also slip in a second call to action here in the in the beginning, right? So in between the hook and the main content, you could say something like, hey, really quick, if you haven't picked up the free 21-step guide to growing your marketing consulting business, then go and get that. It's free if you're a marketing consultant. Check it out. It's going to help you figure out X, Y, and Z. Now let's jump into the episode. You can do something similar like that. You can also do a video animation, like a quick video animation that points to the freebie at the bottom and says link in bio, link in description, right? Um, if you're on YouTube, that's not gonna work on an audio podcast, obviously, but you should be able to get the idea there from this example I shared. So that's typically within the first two minutes, right? You can do this hook, then somewhere in here, you can slip in a quick call to action, 15, 10 seconds, no more than that. And then you get on into the main content. The second thing I wanna note here is that the hooks we're talking about, we'll get into this in a second, they're not just a simple talking head video most of the time. Uh, these days, it's harder to get away with that. You're going to need to add things like music, transitions, B-roll, um, and we'll get into that just now, right now. Uh, and then the last thing I'll, I'll note here is if you look at this episode, so I've linked an episode here. This is actual an actual episode that um, is really good. And if you look at the hook that they do, it's more of cinematic. It takes a little bit more time to make, but they're really good and they increase retention. Uh, and I'll show you a dumbed down version that we did for, for a client here in a second. I don't know why it's kicking me out here. Okay, so to jump in, what is a hook and what makes a good hook? I haven't covered this. We haven't covered this yet, so let's go over this quickly. So really and truly, a hook is just anything that you do to get someone's attention in the beginning of a video or an episode. A good hook, however, will get you to stick around, even get excited for what is coming, right? So what is coming down the pipe? If you've ever watched a movie uh, or you've seen and you've seen a trailer that's like oh i'm super excited for that that's that's kind of like a hook uh, if you've seen a youtube video and they really share some really cool stuff that that they they're going to cover in the episode and you're like oh yeah i'm definitely going to stick around for this that is a good hook it's it's sold you on why you should stick around to the next section right so a couple of ideas to if you're thinking like how do i create a good hook there's a lot of good people on on YouTube or Instagram that talk cover about cover this in more detail, but I'm going to cover it here 
and give you three quick and simple ways you can do this. So number one is open up with a big question. So if, if I opened up with a question like, what would you do if you woke up today and all of your clients left you and all you just saw in your inbox were people asking to cancel your services? What would you do next? How would you get your next clients? If I opened up a video like that, that would probably bring in a lot of people who have that fear, right? If they people have that fear of, of losing clients, that is probably a really big question that they may have in the back of their head. So think about the questions that are looming in your prospects in the back of their mind, the, the biggest question they have. Um, you can use a stock, a stocking, you can use a shocking statistic um, in your opener to really catch people's attention, right? It takes a little bit of research, but you can totally do this. So for example, over 90% of online businesses fail in the first two months. And in today's video, we're going to cover how that how to not be one of those people or how to not be a statistic. So that could also be an example of a hook there. Again, I don't think this stops you from having B-roll or transitions or music or different cuts in. I just think this is this is like an idea you can use in addition to all the other stuff. Number three, narrating a script. So this is, if we go back here really quickly, this is exactly what they do. So I won't go too deep into this, but essentially you're going to narrate a story really quickly. Like meet Luis Diaz, da, 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 da. He's done X, Y, and Z. And on the screen, while you're narrating that, just a voiceover, it's cuts of, of me, of you, me and you talking and the interview and really paints what you're saying, right? So he's driven over 18 million downloads, blah, blah, blah. You should have a number of like the 18 million number coming up while I'm, while you're saying that. So that's a more, um, it's more cinematic. It's more, a little bit more work. Cause you have to narrate the script and write a little story. Um, but if you my advice is that you model Jay Klaus and what he does here with this one. And even if you didn't do it perfect, like we didn't do it perfect when we first did it for one of our clients, um, it'll still help increase retention. So, um, if you look at the ones on the right here, these are when we did not apply this, one of these three hooks. We just took a, a fancy, like one interesting clip from the beginning, stuck it at the front. And that's what the, that's a retention we got on these videos there. So most people are doing that now where they're just taking a clip, they're putting it at the front and they're saying, Hey, that's an interesting part. Let's use that. This is the result has gotten us just full transparency and honesty. When we took a little bit more time, we added sound effects, we added more cuts, we added better captions. Um, and we really tried to paint a story or share a story that was, that was really compelling. This is the story. This is kind of the results we got or is the results we got. If you look at the average view duration, you have 12 minutes, 31 seconds versus two minutes, 13 seconds and five minutes and 36 seconds. So it doubled more than doubled the average view duration. And if you look at average view percentage, you got 26% and 3% and then 11%. So it even, it, this is more than triple, but this at least doubled it and then some the retention on these videos. And this is just by adding this more cinematic hook here at the beginning. If you look at the retention curve, it's way better versus the drop off you see here and some of these other ones, right? So that's an example of one thing you can do to increase retention. For us, it's worked really well and we're, you know, it's, it's a constant practice trying to coach people and, and do it. But if you take the script we showed, I'll show you right here, go back really quick. Check out, check out this link. The slides will be below. So grab the slides, check this out, and you can easily see the video or see what they do in it as well. So that is the retention formula. Quick recap on this. Number one, pick a few different formats and test them. Remember, it's the bread of your turkey sandwich. Delivery, aim to aim to really get the content, uh, to get to the content as fast as possible. If you looked at my format, we go back here really quickly. It's hook main content. We try to paint the context and sell them on why they should stick around. And then we get right into what we promised. We don't want to um, delay that. We want to try and get into the content as fast as possible. All right. And then last but not least, all episodes should start with a compelling hook. Again, using either statistics, you can use a big question that's looming in their mind, or you can use a more cinematic approach where we're having a narrative, telling a story. This is typically really good for interview shows um, and you have B-roll and cuts from the episode going in there, going, you know, as you're saying the narrative, and this should take no longer than about 20 seconds. All right. So that's it. 
Now, if assuming we have all that stuff, we are ready to talk about monetization, my friends. So I will see you in the next training. We're going to cover the content upgrade funnel. Stick around and I will see you there. Thanks again.